What is going on tube you? Welcome back to the channel ladies and gents. Today, we're finally getting this freaking sensor put in. It's the O2 sensor that burnt out. Hopefully this is the problem. Hopefully this fixes it and doesn't come back for a long, long time until they eventually burn out again. But that's what sensors do eventually over time, especially with turbo slash E85 cars. They do go bad over time, but um, hopefully this lasts a, a, a lot longer than I need it to. So let's go ahead, get the car jacked up. Finally just got back from our little vacation. That's why it's been so long since you guys have seen this video or anything about the, uh, the, the red eye. So let's go ahead, get the car jacked up and we'll go ahead and start pulling the old sensor out, putting a new one in. I've already cleared the codes before. I did that before I left, cleared the code, started the car up, let it run, and uh, the car ran great. So I kind of want to test it right now, but I don't want to get the car all warm and hot and stuff before I start playing around with the pipes. So I'm um, just going to leave it as is right now, nice ice cold, and we're going to throw that sensor in, and then we'll get us a, a, a real cold start because it's been, it's been a long time. It's been like two and a half, three weeks. So let's go ahead, let's get that knocked out, and then I'll pick back up with you guys when we're under the car pulling it out. All right, tube you. Okay, I can't. So I can't use the light mode <clears throat> to show you guys what I'm talking about. But here's the sensor in question, literally right here, right off the front. Is it the front? And then the rears are right here, right behind me. One, two, and here are the two fronts. One, two, and this is the guy in question right here. So. Um, you can see he's zip tied up there. I don't know if you guys can see that zip tie. Like I said, I can't show you the freaking, I can't throw the light on for some reason when it's in wide lens mode. There we go. So that zip tie, that's what I gotta work on. And now I can't get it to focus. All right, that's cool. That's cool. Whatever, gotta get that zip tie and it's up there. This might be a little tricky seeing the location of it. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Let's get something to get that zip tie off and then we'll start with getting the damn sensor off for real. Alrighty, so as you can see, this is the old one. Yucky. There you go. Here's the new one. Nice and brand new. Obviously, this is the cap that goes on. The reason I left the cap on is because it has anti seize already from the factory. It has anti seize on the threads and I didn't want to, you know, take it off by accident or something like that. So I was gonna wait till I get it plugged in at least and then I was gonna take that little cap off, but you can already see, well, I'll just take it off. Well, that's what it looks like, brand new. You can see it already has the anti seize on the threads. So that's why I still had the cap on. So I'll put that back on real quick. I'm looking for myself another zip tie because I already cut the old one off because obviously they had it zip tied up there to keep it from coming down and touching, you know, the pipes and stuff. So I'm gonna zip tie it back up as soon as I can find my damn zip ties. That's, that, that's always a problem in the garage, right? You can never find what you need. So let me get on the search for those real quick and then we'll get this bad boy thrown in so we get the fire up. Alrighty, new sensor in, new sensor zip tied, plugged in up there. Boop, boop, boop. Can't see, can't see. It's all right, you gotta trust me, it's plugged in. I heard it snap. So, uh, let's fire it up, give her a go. That should have been all we needed. Cause like I said, I cleared the codes before I left and then she started running fine, so. Should have been a sensor. I hope it's a sensor. Now it's about to get a lot more expensive around here. <laughs> all right, so this might be a little rough. It's been, like I said, two and a half, three weeks. We'll see. just fine. E0300. I don't know what the hell that is. I'm gonna Google that real quick. I guess see what the hell that is. Now I'm surprised it fired up so easily. I guess it is a million and freaking one degrees out. 
Look at all that damn oil. That car just sat there and leaked all that oil. Jesus Christ, man. That's not good. One problem after another. So, go ahead and shut her down. Oh, crap. I forgot I started it. Well, it sounded good. Let's go ahead and shut it down. P0300. Check that out real quick. And uh, then we will go out here, probably clear the code depending on what it is. Get myself an idle log if necessary. And uh, yeah, so let's get to it. Oh, all right, Tube U. Um, yeah, I cleared the code, took it for a spin. Still nothing popping up. I've started up and let it idle a couple of different times now. As you can see, press OK for the view. Checking. Nothing. So, yeah, now I'm just waiting to hear back from Tim on the idle log. Like I said, I don't really want to go out here and start ripping on it, but I did take it down the street just to, you know, cruise down and back to see if I can get that code to pop back up. But it's been, I've started up and, you know, let it idle for quite some time now. Um, this is the, like the third time that I've started up after clearing the code and that code hasn't come back. And I don't feel a weird idle or anything. Hell, I'll even get on it just a little bit. Don't you guys hear it? Just a little bit. Obviously the right way would be, you know, check plugs and stuff like that, but I don't really want to go tear into the damn car if I don't have to. Like it's looking good to go. So um just waiting to hear back on the log. Other than that, it seems like my issues have been fixed for now. So it's always gonna be something once you start tearing these cars and start modifying them. But um as of right now, it looks like our original code for the O2 sensor has gone away. Alrighty to you. So as you see the uh, days have moved forward a little bit and uh the issue is still issuing. Uh, we replaced the sensor, as you guys saw in the earlier clip. Uh, reached out to Tim, uh, got him a data log, sent it out to Tim, reached out to him, asked him if he saw anything. Uh, while waiting for him to get back to me on whether or not he saw anything, I started up the car, drove it down the street, came on back, and before I took it down the street, we had a code that said P0300 running lean so i was like okay that's probably because of the sensor that's probably you know coming off of that same deal so i was like okay just clear the code and uh let's see if it comes back clear the code because the car was running and uh, you know it was idling just fine so i was like whatever clear the code clear the code took it down the street came back fast as we got up to it was about 15 20 miles an hour so it didn't do anything crazy i just wanted to see if the car would drive and it drove i didn't get any weird vibrations no weird uh stutters no weird uh idles or anything like that the, the car was running just fine uh, bought it back, set it down, waited for Tim to get back to me on the log. If he saw anything, he saw there was no fuel pressure. We're sitting at about 17 PSI. Uh, we should be sitting around 40 to 50 for idle. And uh, yeah, that's obviously way, way low. So uh, it could be a couple of things. It could be injectors going bad. It can be fuel pumps going bad. It could be connection with the fuel pumps. Uh, it could be a clock filter. It could be the regulator. Uh, who the hell knows? But uh, we've already... I, he got back to me and me freaking play around with the uh, regulator for a little bit. So that's hiding up under here. You guys can see, there it is. There's the freaking little nut right there where you're gonna adjust the pressure. Let's see if I can get that for you. Right there, pressure adjustment. And all you do is, you know, turn that little guy right there. There's a little Allen key, and then you lock it down to wherever you want it to with the nut on top. So, Changed it, turned it all the way up and all the way down, and there was no change. Um, so yeah, don't know if that would be a regulator problem, if that would be somewhere else problem. Because the funny thing is, um, I actually went back and looked through all of the logs, and we've had a little fruit pressure since I got the damn car back. My very first log, we were only sitting at around 20 to 30 PSI, and that's driving. That was driving. That wasn't even idle, because I didn't take an idle log. I took, actually, I think I did take an idle log. It doesn't matter. Either way, fuel pressure has been long ever since I've started data logging. So since I got the car back, the fuel pressure has been low or maybe 
um, during that very first drive because you get, guys know I didn't date a log during that. That was when the car was stuck in 500 horsepower mode, we thought. But you know, shortly after that, we started data logging, getting Tim sent over everything that he wanted to see. So we can adjust the tune if needed be for the elevation and everything like that. And he didn't see anything there. I didn't see anything. Obviously, I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. But you know, as I'm learning, I'm going on. I went back and started because I was curious. I was like, how long has this been going on? Because I have a couple of logs built up for over the last couple of months. And uh, yeah, it's been going on for quite some time. So we've had low fuel pressure for quite some time. And the reason we haven't noticed is because once I go wide open throttle, the primary pump kicks in and all hell breaks loose, all boost comes in and we're good to go. Pressure returns to normal. We're sitting at about 80 to 90 for pressure. So yeah, the primary fuel pump kicks in when we go wide open throttle and that's why we're good to go. However, if you guys go back and watch those clips, the 6130s and stuff like that, you will hear a slight miss and then just all hell breaks loose. You hear it go, boom, boom. It, it, that's, I think that's why it's been sounding like nitrous. And if you guys remember one of my other videos, I mentioned how there's a slight stutter when I'm cruising around and, you know, park throttle, when I'm doing pro, park throttle driving. Um, I'm pretty sure that's where it was coming from because you're not wide open throttle, so your primary pump isn't kicking in and you're just doing, you know, park throttle driving around. So you're just running on the two fuel pumps that are running around here on low fruit pressure. So I think that's where that stutter slash hesitation was coming from. And I've caught it quite a few times on uh, video, but uh, you guys might not pick it up in camera. On camera, it honestly looks like I'm driving, but I can see it because I know when it's happening. Um, so yeah, so I think that's where that's been coming from this entire time, and that explains a lot. Hell, I even tried to do some digs, and when I would try to do digs, the car would just fall completely on its face, and then all all, all boosts would come in, and it would just go into a wheel spin. Like it, uh, as soon as I come off the brake and start rolling into the throttle, it just freaking dies, and then picks back up like crazy, and then we're off to the races. So yeah. Obviously, I thought that was tune related. I was like, okay, we need some adjustments there. But no, um, turns out there's something going on with the fuel system that we need to get figured out. So that's where we're at right now. I don't want to make this video too long. So I'm probably just going to shut it off here because it is the weekend. Um, Tim is out doing, you know, family stuff. Obviously, he's a business. He's a family. He, he's a person. So he needs to work and do or uh, relax and stuff do as well. But uh, I'm not too crazy about it. It's too damn hot to be racing any freaking way. But um if it comes down to it, if this is not something simple and easy to fix, the car will be going back to the East Coast. Um, I want the car closer to them. They're the ones who touched it. I want them working on it. Um, I, I'm a firm believer. If it, I don't believe this is a shop problem. I believe this is a product failure, uh, probably from four or something else with the car. So I believe this is a product failure. It could be an injector as well. So it could be ID's problem. Um, it could be anything fuel related from what it seems like. But um, so... I don't believe it's a shop install problem because, like I said, he dynoed it. He, you know, it, it, everything was normal. He sent me the pictures of the logs and stuff when he had it, and it, everything looked normal there. But once I got it, between here and there, um, as you can see, the pressure hasn't been too great. So, like I said, if the problem isn't easy, if it's not an easy fix, the car will be going back to the East Coast, and it will be staying on on, on the East Coast for the, the time being. Uh, their shop is in Georgia. I stay in North Carolina. So if this isn't fixed, the car will be going back to the East Coast, and it will be staying over there simply because um, I'm closer to there. I've been trying to get closer to uh, the home for quite some time, and uh, hopefully that time is coming up soon. And if it does, cool. It's, this is one less thing that I have to worry about when it's time to move. Um, I would like to have this fixed easily and out here so I can actually enjoy the car and get content for you guys but I'm not gonna sit here and keep dumping money into it trying to chase problems down um, on my own when I could just send it back to them let them figure it out because you know they're the ones who put everything together and uh, that's 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 probably what will end up happening if it's not a simple and easy fix where I can just go in here like oh that's easy something simple because I feel like it's something simple um, obviously it's very dangerous because you know if this car leans out when you're wide open throttle that's that's a big problem that's a big freaking problem. We have a big dud on our hands if, if that would have happened. Uh, fortunately for me, the primary pump was kicking in and the car was not going uh, lean. So, good there. Um, I will start it up for you guys, but it makes a lot of freaking like dinging and whining noise. I I'll just show you guys. Here you go. I'll just show you what we're looking at. <laughs> Key's already in here. See if you guys can hear the the pumps priming. So a pump is working. 
That's the problem with triple pumps. If one of them goes out, you don't really freaking know until it's too freaking late. Um, let's get up under here, show you guys. Yeah, see, sitting at about 17 right there. Still, and that's with the adjustment because that, that nut was lower than that, and I raised it up. I don't know. If, it says go right with a, a increased pressure. It says pressure. No, it just says pressure adjustment. Yeah, plus right there. So plus is going up, so more pressure if you go to the right. And I turn that shit all the way to the right till it stops. I'm like, I feel like it, it should do something, and it didn't. Even with the car like actually started and running, it doesn't move anywhere. It'll jump up a little bit past 20, like 21, 20, and then just slowly fall right back down. So, that's all I got for you guys, man. It's your first time stopping by. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. You guys get notifications notification you're up. Swing to the Instagram channel low through something slow. All one word, I'll put it down in the description. And uh, I don't know. Until next time, I guess. <laughs> Whenever we get some progress on the red eye. Would have been nice to be out enjoying it, but here we are. Not out enjoying it. But this is what you get. This is what you get. And my breakfast is ready, so I'm out of here, guys. Catch you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,